Hello and welcome to Archi Corner. My name is Josue Diaz. I am a licensed architect in the state of California. Today we're going to be talking about how many parking spaces are required for a project. We're going to break it down into three separate parts. First, we're going to talk about how many spaces are required for non-accessible parking spaces. This includes compact spaces and also standard spaces. Second, we're going to talk about accessible parking spaces, including van spaces and standard spaces. And third, we're going to talk about miscellaneous parking spaces, such as motorcycle parking spaces and electric vehicle charging spaces, which are more common nowadays. So if you want to know more, don't go anywhere. You're about to find out. One of the first things I want to mention before we get started is that the number of parking spaces that are required is based not on the building code, but on local zoning jurisdiction codes. Now, the reason I mention this, and it's kind of frustrating, is that not all jurisdictions have the same format when doing their zoning code. What you might find in division or section six in one jurisdiction might be in section 17 or, div or a whole different division in another jurisdiction. But once you know what you're looking for, it makes it easier to find these things and to navigate the different zoning codes. But let's just get started with this example and go from there. For today's example, let's assume we have the following scenario and we are trying to figure out how many parking spaces are needed for this small project. Let's assume we have a two-story building and the first floor has 1,500 square feet of restaurant, 1,000 square feet for child care facility, 1,000 square feet for retail store. The second floor has 3,500 square feet used for office. Now that we have that information, we must look up the requirements for off-street parking in the zoning code. As you know, I am from California, so I am going to look up the city of Sacramento as an example. It just so happens that chapter 17.608.030 of the zoning code talks about parking requirements by land use type and parking district. Now, as I mentioned earlier to you, every jurisdiction has a zoning code format that is different the one from the other. What has helped me in the past is simply Googling the term off-street parking requirements followed by the name of the jurisdiction that I'm working with. Because I know what charts I'm looking for, the way they are formatted, it helps me find that information quickly. And the reason is that most jurisdictions have charts that look the same. So if you know what you're looking for, and hopefully you will after watching the video in the next few minutes, it'll be easier for you to find the information. Let's continue. Notice that our district is important, so we must know which district we are in. It just so happens that Sacramento has four districts, Central Business District and Arts and Entertainment District, Urban District, Traditional, and Suburban. We are provided this map for easy reference so that we can find out which district our project is located in. For this example, let's assume that we are in the traditional district. This same chapter shows the requirements for each district and the use of the space in an easy to understand chart. We already stated that we are in the traditional district, so we will need to use the third column here. Now, we just need to find the closest match for our use of each space in the first column here. First up is our restaurant. Based on this information, we scroll down the table and find a restaurant use here. We are using the third column and it states that we need one space per 500 square feet of building. Now it's simple math. 1500 square feet divided by 500 equals 3. This restaurant will only need 3 parking spaces. Second one up is a child care facility. Again, we find the section that contains this description. We go to the third column and here it says, oh wait, this is not based on square feet. This is based on number of children. So we need to find out how many children the daycare is taking care of. For the sake of this example, let's say that we do have 12 children. Again, now it's easy math. 12 divided by 12 equals one. This child care center only requires one parking space. A quick note, as you can see, some zoning codes base parking for certain uses based on the number of people. For example, this assembly use would be based on number of occupants. And others may be based on something else. For example, here, a kennel would be based on number of animals. 
and here a nursing home may be based on the number of patient beds. Again, every jurisdiction is different and some may consider square feet and others may consider something else to determine the number of parking spaces like we just saw. So keep that in mind. Third up, the retail store. And we already saw a retail store in the past section right here. One space per 500 square feet. Again, simple math. 1,000 divided by 500 equals two parking spaces. That is all for the first floor. Let's check out the second floor. Let's find office space in the table right here. Notice that this section states that we need one per 500 square feet. Again, simple math. 3,500 divided by 500 equals five. Now, we do have the option of adding more parking spaces. This section lets us know that we can do a maximum of one stall per 250 gross square feet, which is basically double. Again, the math 3,500 divided by 250 equals 10. For the sake of this example, let's assume that we want as many parking stalls as we can get. So we will use the maximum parking allowed of 10. Pretty simple, right? Once you add up all the numbers, you see that you will be required and allowed to have 16 parking stalls. What about their size? Again, there's a simple chart for this usually found within the same overall section of the zoning code. For the city of Sacramento, it looks a little like this. Notice that there are two tables, a standard size and a compact size. In Sacramento, you must have standard spaces. And if you wanted to, you could have some compact spaces to minimize the amount of area your parking space takes. In this example, the zoning code allows up to 50% of all required and non-required vehicle parking spaces to be compact cars. In our example, if we, we don't have to, but if we did 50% compact stalls, our total would be 8 standard size stalls and 8 compact size stalls. Again, you could potentially simply provide 16 standard stalls, but compact stalls are ideal when your space is tight and sometimes you just want it anyway. Now, you will notice that these tables talk about angled parking and parallel parking. 90 degree parking is quite simple and it looks something like this. If we did something like this, the size of standard stalls would be 8.5 feet by 18 feet and the size of compact stalls would need to be 8 feet by 15 feet. Notice that this jurisdiction also requires maneuvering space beyond the parking stall so that a car can get into it. This is also needed and although it's not technically part of the parking stall itself, it does need to be provided to make the stall usable. The other three types of angle parking vary, but in general they look like this. The only difference, as you can see here, is the degree at which they are angled. Same like we did before. We simply refer to the tables for the size of the stall and maneuvering space. The last example is parallel parking, and this is often what you see along a building or fence and it looks like this. So now that you know how many total parking stalls are required and allowed, and also how to determine the size depending on the type of parking you want, how about the number of accessible parking stalls? Before I move on with this section, I wanted to quickly mention that if you like this type of content, one way that you can support me to create future videos like this is by supporting me through Patreon or buying me a coffee. Details on these accounts are noted in the video description, so check it out. Another way to help me is by simply sharing this video with other people that you think will benefit from this type of content. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Now let's go back to where we left off. Accessible parking stalls are determined not by the zoning code, but by whichever accessibility code your state or local jurisdiction may require. Most states use a code that in one way or another is based on the ADA. It could be a chapter within your building code or city code, or it may be a separate standard such as ANSI A117.1. Again, because all these are usually similar, for the purpose of this example, we will simply follow the ADA requirements. Under scoping, ADA section 208.2 provides a table that looks like this. Since we only have 16 parking spaces, we are only required to have one accessible stall. Have in mind that the size of accessible parking spaces may be different than the sizes allowed by the zoning code. I am not going to get too deep into a discussion of accessible stalls because they may get pretty complicated. For now, 
We simply need to know that in our example, ADA determines the number of accessible stalls and that per the ADA, section 208.2.4, for every six or fraction of six accessible parking spaces, at least one must be a van parking space. Therefore, in our example, the one required accessible stall needs to be a van stall, not a standard stall. Now, we already determined that we needed a total of 16 stalls, eight standard and eight compact stalls. So where do we fit in our accessible stall? Remember that compact stalls were allowed to be up to 50% of the total stalls. So based on this, we could use eight standard stalls, one van accessible stall, and seven compact stalls. That takes care of item number two. How about some other miscellaneous parking stalls, such as electric vehicle parking spaces? That is usually addressed by the International Green Construction Code, or whichever green standard code your jurisdiction may follow. Assuming we are using the IGCC, Section 501.3.7.3 would apply. As you can see here, this code would apply to our example if we had 20 or more parking stalls, and if so, we would need to have EV ready spaces for 4% of the total number of parking spaces. However, since we have less than 20 occupants, we do not need this. But if we did, only EV ready spaces would be required, which I am not going to get into too deep in this conversation. But in short, it just means that most of the infrastructure for future electric vehicle charging station is provided, but an actual charging space is not. Motorcycle spaces are not usually regulated in the sense that they are not usually required. However, some jurisdictions do provide the size requirement for motorcycle parking spaces. In other words, no need for them, but if you do provide them, they must meet a specific size. You would find this size in the zoning code requirement section, just like we did for the regular non-accessible parking stalls. In our example, using City of Sacramento zoning code, we find that motorcycle parking spaces need to be 4 feet by 8 feet. And there you go. Pretty simple stuff, right? I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to like it, and if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. But for now, this is Archie Corner, signing out.